Welcome back to ESC 418A. This is Lecture 9C, Summaries. In this lecture, we're talking about abstracts, which are the summaries at the start of a journal article, and executive summaries, which are the summaries at the start of a technical report. Albert Einstein said it best when he said, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. This is really the case with writing summaries. The main thing we need to do to write a good summary is to understand the material we're summarizing. There's really no way to go through a report, pull the sections of text that we want, and mash them together into a nice coherent summary, unless we understand what we're writing about. So with that, let's talk about the differences between an abstract and an executive summary. You may recall Lecture 9A, Gord McKenna gave a nice overview of technical reports and he mentioned something along the lines of abstracts and executive summaries are pretty similar, except that abstracts are usually about half a page and executive summaries are usually one to two pages, which is correct. And it really made me think I should go into a little bit more detail in this section about what are the differences between the two types of summaries. And I'll also mention that this is the only individual section of the report that I'm going through. The other sections of the report are fairly straightforward and covered pretty well in terms of what the contents are, how to format them, what to include and exclude. But summaries are probably the most challenging part of a document to write. Again, that's because we need to really understand what's in the rest of the document in order to summarize it properly. So an abstract is found in journal articles and it is half a page in length approximately whereas an executive summary is found in a technical report and it includes about two pages, usually. The purpose of an abstract in a journal article is really to help the reader decide whether or not to read the whole article. However, with an executive summary, often the reader has no intention of reading the whole article and they just want to get the key information they need from the executive summary. They might go into the report and find additional detail if it's not in the executive summary but generally the preference for a technical report is that a high level reader gets everything they need from the executive summary. And that's why it's about four times as long as the abstract. It needs to be a little bit more detailed. In other words, with a journal article, the reader is likely to go into the article and is actually looking to decide whether or not they want to. But in an executive summary, the whole point is to avoid going into the article. And so the executive summary is to help them not go into, into the article. So the contents are pretty similar. An abstract has a summary of the purpose, methods, results, discussion, and conclusion. The key thing here is that it summarizes the purpose, but not the introduction. So if you go into the introduction, it will have a lot of information besides the purpose, but almost nothing else from that introduction will make its way into an abstract. Similarly, with an executive summary, you would like to have the purpose, but not the rest of what's in the introduction brought into the abstract. The other difference here is that the abstract for a journal article will include conclusions, but the focus of the executive summary is on the recommendations. In other words, what do we need to do? In a journal article, the abstract has conclusions, which is really answering the question, what is the big picture finding, or what did we learn, or what are the implications? They do have the similarity that the abstract and the executive summary are the only part of the document that the vast majority of readers will actually read. So you can find abstracts online for virtually any journal article you would ever want to see. And th these are free to the public because it helps them decide whether they want to pay the 35 bucks to get the whole journal article. And believe me, once you, once you leave university, it's quite challenging to decide do I really need this paper? Do I need to pay this? Because that can really add up if you need to purchase dozens or hundreds of articles. Another similarity that both types of documents have is that we should not have new information in the summary. And this is where I will uh, dispute Gord's take on this a little bit. I did mention that it's not completely set in stone, but I would avoid adding new information to a summary unless you really have a lot of leeway in your document. The abstract should not be copied and pasted material from other parts of the document. Neither should the executive summary be. It should be a summarized, written, coherent, and concise section that reflects the key findings and key information from the rest of the document. So as I mentioned, writing an executive summary is very challenging. It will take a lot of practice to get this right. But here are some key points to get you started. Number one, read the whole report. 
Don't just read the introductory paragraphs or the introductory topic sentences or anything like that. You really need to get a good understanding. And if you wrote the report, you still need to go back and read it to remember exactly what you wrote and what were those key points. You can probably get most of the abstract or executive summary written without rereading the entire report, but you are likely to miss pieces if you just do that. So the main thing is understand the report. If it's a report that's written entirely by you, that's probably pretty easy. But most reports, if they're technical reports, have multiple authors and co-authors. What this means is that you can also have those multiple authors and co-authors share the summary writing. Record key messages. So as you're reading through the document, jot down some notes about what are the key things you need to say. Don't write it down word for word what was in the report and don't copy and paste it. Otherwise, you'll end up with a copied and pasted abstract. You can ignore the detailed results. You don't need to bring back the numbers, the quantities, the absolute values of anything. You're really looking for big picture key information. And the abstract or executive summary now needs to balance general information. It can't be too specific, nor can it be too vague. So for example, in an abstract, it wouldn't be helpful to say you went out field sampling. That's too vague. It also wouldn't be very helpful to the reader to spend your entire 200 to 300 word abstract listing all of the variables that you measured and the instruments you used to measure it. So this is where you need to balance and it will take practice to get this right. A couple of other tips. Don't repeat the title. Everybody's going to read the title before they read the abstract. So relisting the words that are in the title is just sort of a waste of a dozen words or so, and words are precious. Don't use any empty phrases in the abstract. Avoiding empty phrases is always a good idea, but in an abstract or executive summary, it's absolutely critical. On the lecture page, I've linked to a few different sites that have some good instructions on how to write an abstract. But as I mentioned, it's going to take a lot of practice. So the first really good introduction you can get to this is when you're doing your literature review. Have a look at the abstracts you're reading. Do they have enough information? Do they bring you into the document and make you think this is a good document for me, it has the information I need? Or are they too vague? And do they actually make you go into the document to help you decide whether you need to read the document? That should really be the key determinant when you're looking through these papers. Ask yourself, does the abstract tell me whether or not the rest of this paper will be useful to me? And if so, it's probably a pretty good example of an abstract. Okay, well that's it for lecture 9. See you all in lecture 10.